You have uh, misunderstood us, actually. This is not the topic. The, we, we don't talk about the conservative treatment. Uh, I am not justified about conservative treatment. Your topic is, is uh, yeah, it is written here. Well, uh, Management if there is no neurology. This okay. is something else. Okay, I will do that. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank the you. Content okay. is that, but the okay. title is different. Okay. Uh, if we look at the literature, first in history, it uh, goes back to 80s, uh, uh, and the first published key cervical lord compression, cervical cord compression due to cervical disc disease. First paper. If we uh, look at the statistics, lifelong uh, neck pain prevalence is very high. And even in uh, patients with uh, MRI positive uh, patients, uh, before fourth decade is 25%, and it uh, goes up to 60% after the fourth decade uh, without uh, neurology. So not all of these patients have neurological abnormality. Uh, but the degenerative disease, degenerative disc disease starts at the second decade, second decade. And 40% of asymptomatic people have radiologic signs of uh, cervical disc disease, my myelopathy. So radiologic findings are not always correlated with pain or neurological abnormalities. Uh, so if we know the natural history of the degeneration, we can understand the disease. So we have some questions. What is natural history? What is aging? And what is disease? What may be the benefit of patient from surgery in cervical spondylotic disc disease? When to operate and when to be conservative? These are very difficult questions for me. Uh, does surgery change the natural history of the disease? Look, this is a patient operated by me, and this is the previous uh, MRI. And I have operated this patient, but after two or three years, we have uh, ongoing degeneration in the upper and lower levels. This is another patient. Look at this C3 uh, uh, and 4. And I have also corrected this patient. But again, in the upper level, we have adjacent disease. So if surgery is not always uh, brings the uh, best solutions. You, you can cr criticize this, but we have thousands of cases like that. Uh, for example, look at this patient. This wa patient was operated from this uh, level, and I, uh, when he came to me, he had this uh, disc disease in the upper level and lower levels, and I thought that maybe if I uh, make a cervical prosthesis, uh, it may be better, but there, uh, after the surgery, there uh, started, uh, the patient has started to have, uh, again, neck pain and some uh, little uh, problem in the uh, lower level and adjacent segment disease again. So, uh, progressive degeneration is uh, uh, an inevitable process. It starts in adolescence, and either it goes to ankylosis or an unstable spine. Mostly we deal these uh, patients in this stage. And uh, some uh, patients have stondylosis, some spondylosis, some have deformity, but generally all together. <coughs> and the degenerative disease is a, a very common etiology. We, the most uh, mostly we operate degenerative patients in our uh, lifetime. So what is the natural history? Aging is a natural process. 
Natural history is the scientific research of plants and animals in their natural environments, leaning more towards the observational than experimental methods of the study. Look, this is another, uh, this is a uh, newborn, and look at the degeneration going on by the time. These are other ex uh, examples of the degenerative process. The mechanism is, uh, or in natural history, is in cellular level by decreasing number of the notochordal cells, cellular aging, apoptosis, and in structural level like vascular insufficiency, poor nutrition, and plate calcification, etc., and gen also genetic factors. Negative factors over natural process. Uh, we also, we must think about these factors, like the static factors like OPLL, dynamic factors like minor trauma, congenital factors, metabolic, environmental, occupational, and surgical factors. Example of adjacent segment degeneration. Look at these pictures. And late is a late complication. Adjacent segment is a late complication of surgical fusion. It's, it goes on either by hypermobility or hypomobility. In hypermobility, it happens over the fused level and over the spondylotic level. There's hypermobility. Uh, but also hypermobility. So it's, a, it's complex. Uh, this collapse, progressive uh, degenerative spondylosis, it has too many bi uh, biomedical fa uh, biomechanical factors. We, we, we must study some biomechanics. Mobilization of the previously non-mobile adjacent segment, abnormal loading of the facet joints, subchondral thickening, cellular necrosis, etc. Look, this is the fused level, and this is the, uh, the level which is more uh, hypermobile after surgery. This is the mobility, range of motion before surgery, and you can see the increase, and which is statistically significant in uh, biomechanical studies. Also, postlaminectomic hyphosis is another problem. Damage to the dorsal ligamentous complex, and uh, as a result, axial loads increase kyphosis related to the level arm of the bending moment. So, there are many, this is a very complex, and I cannot talk, uh, go through, all through it in this lecture. Uh, but this paper is more than five, 50 years ago. And look at uh, the, uh, the conclusion, the natural history of the disease is especially important in relation to myelopathy. Without knowledge of it, we cannot put treatment. So, selecting therapy. Most patients can be treated by conservative treatment. Just remember that surgery is not always the first option. Uh, Surgical, think about surgical complications, like dysphagia, dysphonia, neurovascular injury, cord trauma, etc. I'm not talking about this. Surgical, you all know the surgical indications. Surgery, the question, is it possible to change the natural history of the cervical spondylitic disease by surgery? Answer, no, we don't have a randomized controlled study. Surgery is not without risk. Look at this study, more than 10 years, collecting the results of the United States uh, uh, from uh, this time to 2000. And this is the, the number of the patients. This is the number of the complications. And by the age, the complication rate is statistically significantly it's increasing. And also, with the comorbid patients, more co comorbid patients, uh, it's getting uh, more, getting more. And categorization of complications after surgery for laminectomy. Look, that's uh, eight, uh, 700, uh, up approaching to 800, and in the renal and hematoma, uh, 
that this is very high, I think. Japanese Research Society, they uh, follow 400 cervical spondylotic myelopathy patients for 10 years. Although some relief after surgery, there is no change in natural process. Patients continue to lose their daily activity. Most important factor is the spondylosis and osteoarthritis relating to the aging process in musculoskeletal system. Okay, some uh, examples for conservative treatment, uh, restriction of movement and rest, uh, two weeks, one or two weeks immobilization, medical treatment, anti-inflammatory drugs, muscle relaxants, steroids, etc. And physical therapy modalities, traction, thermotherapy, a tense interferential currents, message and exercise. And the rehabilitation program, this is very important. Postural correction, uh, head forward posture. It's, this is very important. Core stabilization is very important. We don't know this. Uh, the core muscles are very important and they are, they are in a chain. They affect each other. And if we don't have a good uh, the core muscle here, we will not have, I guarantee you, we will not have a good uh, cervical uh, muscle or lumbar muscle or gluteal muscle. These muscles are very important. And remodeling uh, is also another rehabilitation, relaxation of contractions, regain of normal range of motion, and regain of normal activity, aerobic conditioning. And also interventional therapy, needling, dry needling, transforming injections, facet blocks, epidural injections. And the, uh, the last word, uh, myelopathy and progressive neurological worsening uh, necessitates surgery. Surgery does not affect the natural process of the disease. Patients continue to, uh, continue to lose their daily activities reason uh, is spondylosis and osteoarthritis due to aging of the musculoskeletal system, anti-inflammatory drugs, immobilization by a corset, and physical therapy modalities are mostly considered in conservative treatment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, probably uh, you talked um, mostly about the conservative treatment of the disease. Uh, I think w what he uh, uh, thought about this session uh, was uh, we could discuss about the cases with no neurologic deficit, but maybe with uh, signal changes uh, in uh, MRI, maybe with uh, dynamic stenosis, for example, in uh, neutral uh, MRI, no uh, big uh, compression, and uh, but in flexion extension, you can see some but, uh, or uh, cases with cervical surgical uh, imbalance. Uh, can you uh, at least uh, uh, discuss a little about uh, this section? I mean, do you operate cases with signal changes with no neurologic deficit? Uh, the I think uh, in this. Uh, we, we must not operate without neurology, my opinion. But if the patient has, is stenotic, if the, the patient has cle clear uh, surgical indications, for example, more than 40% uh, canal stenosis, and, uh, and I uh, convince, uh, I'm, if I'm convinced that the patient will benefit from surgery, I operate the patient. But uh, sometimes these kind of uh, changes uh, we can see in MRI, but this patient uh, has not a severe uh, myelopathy. And so uh, it is, uh, I don't operate all these uh, patients. Okay, in, in a case scenario, a patient with uh, neck pain, maybe uh, mild uh, reticular pain, uh, no other neurological deficit, and uh, in, uh, we have signal changes in T2-weighted uh, MRI. Uh, for example, do you operate surgery? Do you recommend? Um, sometimes.